This is a story of invention, innovation and sheer business genius that began more than 150 years ago with a small group of men making agricultural implements in Lincoln. The range of products was limited, but it earned the firm of Burton and Proctor a reputation for excellence. The only problem facing Mr Burton and Mr Proctor was that they wanted to expand and they needed the help of someone with a good business brain and probably, more importantly, the capital to take on larger projects. Enter Joseph Ruston, a farmer's son from Cambridgeshire. With a good commercial training and an inheritance from his father's estate, in 1857 he became an equal partner in a new company, Ruston, Burton and Proctor. Ruston quickly became the driving force of the partnership, spending lavishly on a huge expansion programme. Mr Burton was convinced the company would be ruined and within six months he left the partnership. He was wrong. By 1889, Ruston, Proctor & Company was one of the largest engineering firms in the country. And thanks to Joseph Ruston's untiring efforts as a globe-trotting super salesman, the company had contacts and contracts all over the world. No job was too large. In fact, as far as Ruston was concerned, large-scale jobs meant larger profits. He persuaded a group of Lancashire businessmen that a ship canal from Liverpool to Manchester would be economically viable if Ruston-built mechanical excavators were used. That brought orders for 71 Ruston-Dunbar excavators, better known as steam navvies, that worked alongside 16,000 men and boys on the massive project. The output of steam engines, threshing machines, boilers, pumps, steam rollers and locomotives was enormous. Joseph Ruston, who died in 1897, had seen the introduction of the oil engine. And despite the domination of the oil engine market by neighbours R. Hornsby and Son in Grantham, Ruston's played an important part in developing the internal combustion engine. By the outbreak of the Great War, they were building cold start oil engines. Meanwhile, Hornsby's oil engines were capturing the headlines. They produced the world's first oil engine tractors and locomotives and the first fully tracked vehicle, the Hornsby chain tractor, a revolutionary concept that left the opposition standing. A Hornsby engine provided power for illuminating the Statue of Liberty. Another powered Marconi's transmitter that sent the first wireless message across the Atlantic. If Joseph Ruston was a super salesman, then Hornsby's were super publicists. During the Great War, Ruston's produced a huge variety of war machines. Fighter aircraft like the legendary Sopwith Camel. Then there were guns, parts, ammunition, submarine engines, mines and hundreds of large oil engine tractors for the Russian front. But just down the road, Hornsby, along with Foster's, another Lincoln company, developed the ultimate war machine. It was built in great secrecy. The workforce were told they were making water carriers for Mesopotamia. What emerged from the production lines was the tank. First seen in action on the Somme in 1915, it was not an instant military success. But by 1917, after many modifications, it helped to turn the tide of the war at Cambrai. Ruston's technology was advanced by the war and the company looked forward to considerable peacetime expansion. However, at Grantham, Hornsby's entire output had been devoted to specialised items. When the war ended, their peacetime markets had shrunk so dramatically they needed to amalgamate with a firm that could boast a healthier order book. Ruston's acquired the Hornsby operation and the firm of Ruston and Hornsby Limited was born in 1918. The new company still made the traction engines, road rollers and other world-class products that had turned it into a major market force, but by this time a big range of gas engines was available and Ruston's had designed a gas producer that could burn any combustible material. Also around this time, with an upsurge of interest in motoring, Ruston's decided to make automobiles. They sold more than a thousand Ruston Hornsby cars before realising in 1925 that they simply couldn't compete with mass-produced and much cheaper models from manufacturers like Ford. Although a full range of steam engines were still being produced in Lincoln, 
Rustons realized that the internal combustion engine was here to stay. Through various mergers, takeovers, and business restructuring, by 1930, Ruston Bucyrus Limited appeared on the scene, an amalgamation with the American excavator company Bucyrus Erie. The Lincoln factory benefited from new American designs, and Ruston engines were used throughout the RB range. It proved an unbeatable combination. In World War II, the company's total output for the war effort was tremendous, and one of the Ruston factories was equipped to produce tanks. But after 1945, international competition in an increasingly specialized market was very fierce. Profit margins became slimmer. But even so, Rustons found the money and the skills to start one of their most ambitious projects ever, the industrial gas turbine. The wartime team, led by Frank Whittle, developed the gas turbine for jet propulsion of aircraft. And in 1946, Rustons employed one of the leading members of Whittle's team, GBR, or Bob Fielden, together with some of his colleagues from Power Jets Limited. Such was Bob Fielden's lasting legacy to the city and the country that in 2003, he received an honorary doctorate in technology from Lincoln University. Back in 1949, as a result of Bob Fielden's work, running tests were being carried out on the prototype 3CT turbine. The success of this engine led in 1952 to the full-scale production of the TA gas turbine, rated at 150 bhp, 750 kilowatts, with heat exchanger, or 1,260 bhp, that's 900 kilowatts, without the heat exchanger. In the early 1950s, the Ruston Group had production sites at Lincoln, Grantham and Colchester. When the 1953 Engineering and Marine Exhibition at Olympia was threatened with closure because of an electrician strike, a Ruston gas turbine saved the day. It supplied all the lighting and the exhibition was able to carry on. The first Ruston turbine for an oil field application had already been sold to the Middle East and turbines were also sold for use in Italy's natural gas fields. In America, Ruston turbines provided all the energy needs at the Park Plaza shopping center in Little Rock, the capital city of Arkansas. They operated 2,500 horsepower, 1.86 megawatts TA, were sold in increasingly large numbers. In the late 1960s, a more powerful 4,000 horsepower, that's three megawatts TD, was produced. Then, demand from the oil industry led to the development of the more compact TB, rated at around 3,000 horsepower, or 2.24 megawatts. Later, it was sold with a rating of 5,000 horsepower, a massive 3.73 megawatts. The company continued to expand rapidly, and in 1968 was acquired by GEC. This gave a tremendous boost to the gas turbine business in Lincoln, and Ruston Gas Turbines was formed the following year as part of the huge GEC empire. Throughout the 70s and 80s, the business continued to grow, not only for oil and gas, but also in electrical power generation, becoming a world leader in gas turbines. Towards the end of the 80s, GEC and Alcatel Alstom of France formed a joint venture in energy and transport, GEC Alstom. In gas turbines, it set up a partnership company with GE of America called European Gas Turbines, or EGT. With the introduction in the 1980s of the Typhoon gas turbine rated at 4 megawatts and dry low emissions technology, DLE, the business entered a sustained and still ongoing period of change. The 4 megawatt Typhoon was the first of a new family of engines successfully introduced in the following one and a half decades forming the basis of the machinery in the current Siemens business portfolio. In the middle of the 1990s, EGT shipped the 3,000th gas turbine to a customer in the UK North Sea. In 1997, the 7 megawatt Tempest was introduced, and in the year 2000, the 13 megawatt rated Cyclone was launched onto the market. During the same decade and a half of successful product launches, the new, much stronger gas turbine business enjoyed great success. In 1998, GEC Alstom was floated on the stock market, renamed Alstom. 
The company in Lincoln was itself renamed Alstom Gas Turbines. In 1999, the energy business of Alstom and ABB joined together to form ABB Alstom Power. In May 2000, Alstom bought out ABB's 50% of the business to form Alstom Power, which incorporated the gas turbine business in Lincoln. And on April the 30th, 2003, Alstom sold its industrial gas turbine business in Lincoln, Aberdeen, Spain and Singapore to Siemens. The company is at the forefront of energy sustainability, supplying efficient power and lifetime product service to the global oil and gas industry and the major industrial power users and producers. It's a far cry from the days when the visionary Joseph Ruston decided that he could improve the manufacture of agricultural machinery. But the core values of engineering innovation and exceeding customer expectations that created Ruston's success are at the very heart of the Siemens business.